Hi everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about um, applications of our 3D vectors. Uh, so a classic type of problem uh, for 3D vectors is typically uh, multiple vectors working on uh, a stationary object. So here we have a weight that weighs 480 pounds and it's supported by three ropes. The weight is located at point S and um, the ropes are attached at three anchor points P, Q, and R. So essentially, if you can imagine, um, let's say you have like a weight that's floating in the middle of the room and it's connected to three ropes which are anchored at different points on the ceiling. Um, so this problem is a little bit tricky conceptually because uh, we'll, we're asked to find the force or the tension on each rope. So the force is going to be the magnitude. However, we cannot simply use our given points here um, and our magnitude formula to find that force. The reason for that is um, when we are when we look at each um, vector individually, it doesn't take into account the force of the other vectors at play. So there's actually three ropes uh, acting on this weight, and the weight actually has its own downward facing vector. So we're gonna have to do a specific process to help us create a new vector that takes into account the other vectors at play. So for this process, the first thing we're going to need to do is create unit vectors. So we're going to have to create unit vectors for um, each rope. Then with that unit vector, we're going to multiply by um, the tension on the rope, which is going to be the magnitude for each vector. So we're going to create a new unit vector, which is essentially moving it so the um, initial point is at 0, 0, 0, and then chopping it down so the length is 1. And then we can take that nice unit vector and we could adjust it for the tension on each rope. And that's what we're going to be trying to solve for. So once we've created the equations for the vectors taking into account the other vectors at play, we, th we can then create a system of equations. And then we can solve for all of our tensions, which are represented by magnitudes. Um, but before we do that, let's uh, start by sketching um, just a quick sketch of what's happening here. So this is my x vector, here's my y vector, here's my z vector. Um, so the weight is located at 0, 2, negative 1. So it's essentially down here. I'll do dotted line there. So this is the weight that is kind of floating stationarily in midair. Um, then one of the ropes from our weight is anchored at 200, zero, zero, which is point P. So that's going to be right here. This is point P. And that rope is acting in this direction. It's starting from your weight, acting um, in the opposite direction. Our next uh, anchor is at 040, zero, and that's going to be right here. That is point Q. And it looks like this. And our last anchor point is um, at negative 2, 0, 0. So that's going to be negative 2 um, on the x-axis. And it looks like this. And this is point R. And then, of course, this is point S, the location of the weight. Um, now, we also have the weight vector, which is going to be um, fit going downwards. And I'm going to call this uh, vector W. I'm also going to give each of our vectors a more general name. I'm going to call vector SP um, vector V. I'll call this uh, SR vector um, Z. And I'll call this vector U. Okay, so now, as we mentioned, um, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a unit vector for each rope. So let's start with um, vector SP. So we have an initial point at 0, 2, negative 1, and a terminal point at 2, 0, 0. So first we need to make a component vector, which is terminal minus initial. 2 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and 0 minus negative 1 is 1. 
the magnitude of this vector, we're going to use our magnitude formula, which is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, is going to be 3. So our unit vector is just our component vector divided by the magnitude. So I'm going to divide each um, term or each part of our uh, vector by 3. So that's a unit vector for vector v. Um, now let's do a component vector for vector sr. So now our terminal point is at negative 2, 0, 0. Same initial point, though. So this one um, has a component vector negative 2, negative 2, positive 1. And the magnitude of this vector is also going to be 3. So our unit vector, uh, we just divide our component vector by the magnitude. Okay. And then uh, the last one, let's do... Uh, vector s q so now 0 4 0 is going to be our terminal point and same initial point so our component vector is going to be 0 2 1 the magnitude of that vector is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared so the square root of 5 so our unit vector is going to be 0 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5. So these three vectors here, here, and here are the unit vectors. So now we're going to take these unit vectors and adjust them for the tension on each rope. And we're going to do that just by multiplying each term by the magnitude. So let's start with this one, um, SP, vector SP, which we'll call vector V. So v is just going to be our unit vector multiplied by the magnitude, which will be uh, the tension on this rope. Okay, so now this vector is adjusted uh, for to account for the other vectors that are also acting in this scenario. Okay, so now let's make one for this vector, uh, vector z. So I'm going to take the unit vector, uh, which is right here, and I'm essentially just going to multiply each term by the magnitude of z. So negative 2 thirds times the magnitude of z, negative 2 thirds times the magnitude of z, and 1 third times the magnitude of z. Okay, and then the last one, um, vector sq, which we are also calling vector u. I'm going to take the unit vector, which is right here, and I'm going to multiply it by the tension or the magnitude. So it's going to be 0, 2 over root 5 magnitude of u, 1 over root 5 magnitude of u. Okay, so now we have the three vectors that represent our ropes, but we also have to make a vector for the weight. Now this one is a little bit more straightforward. As you can see, this is going straight down, so it's only going to have a z value. X and y are going to be zero. The weight is 480 pounds, and since it is going down, our vector is going to be represented by zero, zero, negative 480. So now we have all of our vectors um, set up, and now we have to create our system of equations. So now uh, this is something we did with 2D vectors, and it has to do with a physics concept. So if we have an object that is stationary that has multiple vectors acting on it, we know that the sum of all of the vectors should be 0. And once again, that's because this weight, it's not slowly drooping down. It's not slowly moving up. It is stationary, which means the vectors or the sum of the vectors should equal 0. So we can conclude that v plus z plus u plus w should equal 0. So I'm essentially going to add up 0, 0, 0. I'm essentially going to um, add up my different terms going down the column so I can create a system of three variables. So once again, we are trying to solve for this magnitude, which is the tension on each rope. And since I have three variables, I need three equations. So I can do this plus this plus zero plus zero equals zero. 
this plus this plus this plus zero equals zero, and this plus this plus this plus this equals zero. So those will be my three equations. So let's write those below. So the first equation will be two thirds magnitude of V minus, oops, sorry, we're going down, minus two thirds magnitude of Z plus zero plus zero equals zero. And then let's go down the second column, negative two thirds magnitude of V minus two thirds magnitude of Z plus two over root five magnitude of U plus zero equals zero. And our last column right here, we're going to do one third times the, mag times the magnitude of V plus one third times the magnitude of Z plus one over root five times the magnitude of U. And I'm going to move this negative 480 to the other side. So it equals positive 480. Now there's a lot of different ways you can solve a system of three variables. You can use matrices. Um, I'm going to use old fashioned substitution and elimination. Um, so I numbered them so you can follow the steps that I take. Uh, the first thing I notice is that in equation one, I only have two variables, which means that I can solve for one of them. So if I set up an equation there, here's equation one. I know that two-thirds times the magnitude of V equals positive two-thirds times the magnitude of Z. And from that, I can conclude that the magnitude of V is actually equal to the magnitude of Z. Um, so this, we can then substitute into equation two and three. I can replace either variable. Um, I can replace magnitude of V or magnitude of Z. So let's say that I go in and I'm going to substitute the magnitude of V with the magnitude of z. So equation two will become this. Uh, when this is replaced with magnitude of z, I can combine these two terms. So it will become negative four thirds times the magnitude of z plus two over root five magnitude of u equals zero. And I'm gonna do the same substitution here. I'm gonna replace this with the magnitude of z and I'm gonna combine like terms. So equation three becomes two thirds times the magnitude of Z plus one over root five times the magnitude of U equals 480. Okay, so now I have a system of um, two equations which I can solve. I'm not gonna use elimination here actually, I'm just gonna use substitution. So let's look at equation two. Um, I'm going to solve for one of our variables. So we'll say, um, let's move our z term to the other side. And let's solve for the magnitude of u. So I'm going to multiply both sides by root 5 and divide both sides by 2. And we end up with 2 root 5 over 3 times the magnitude of z. So this... I can substitute, um, I can substitute it into equation three. So I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna replace U with this. So equation three will become two thirds times the magnitude of Z plus when I substitute uh, my u value with this. Notice that this root 5 and this root 5 will cancel out and what I have left is actually 2 thirds times the magnitude of z equals 480 and now since I have a single variable I can actually solve. So I have 4 thirds times the magnitude of z equals 480 so the magnitude of z is 360. So I've found one of our variables Luckily, we know from right here that the magnitude of Z is equal to the magnitude of V. So we also know that the magnitude of V is equal to 360. And then um, we can substitute the magnitude of Z right here to help us find the magnitude of U. So the magnitude of U is going to be two root five over three times 360 and from here you can use your calculator to give you a nice decimal approximation
and that should give you 536.7 when you round. So now we have the, the tension on each rope. So the tension on each rope would be 360 pounds, 360 pounds, and 536.7 pounds. So that is going to be our final answer. And of course, you could go back and match your magnitudes with the specific rope if I asked you to determine specifically which rope had which tension. But those are the three tensions for your three ropes. Okay, um, so at this point, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and um, give this problem a try. So remember, follow that same process. Make your unit vectors, multiply them by um, the tension, and then set up your system. Okay, so let's go through this um, one step at a time. So on this first part, you can see here that I am creating uh, the unit vectors. Uh, for each one. So I have vector u, vector v, and vector z. Um, I haven't distributed the magnitudes in yet, but I will do that below. And then I have the weight vector right here. From there, we can set up our system of equations. We know that u plus v plus z plus w should equal zero because we have an object that is stationary. So the uh, sum of the forces should be zero. So here is a vector u, here's vector v, here's vector z, here's vector w. And we can create our system of equations by adding the terms going down our columns. So here's my system of three equations. Here's from column one, from column two, and from column three. From there, we can start the, the process of solving this system. So here, once again, we see that vector v is equal to vector z. And then we can sub substitute that into equations two and three to help us create a system of two equations or two variables, solve for one and then substitute and solve and substitute. Um, so you should end up with uh, 140.7, 140.7 and 216.3 pounds for um, the tensions of all three ropes. All right, uh, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.